Okay, now that we've got Booktubeathon out of the way, let's talk about my reading month. Let's talk about my reading month, shall we? I'd say the month of July was almost astounding when it comes to reading. I read 29 books in July. Yes, 29 books. And that's almost a book for every day of the month, which is kind of insane. I will definitely um, have my Goodreads linked below so you can go check that out and check out all the books that I read because I'm not talking about 29 books in this video. It ain't gonna happen, y'all. But what I will talk about are the books that really stood out to me and that I really want to talk about them because I love them. This will be in no particular order. But first up is a book by an author that I have loved for a long time. She writes pretty epic fantasy stories that also have a lot of romance in them and I love her for that. This is a book that I had never come across before and I'm I think it's going to be the beginning of a new series for her and this book is The Winter King by C.L. Wilson. I absolutely adored this book. It is so compelling and I flew through it even though it's quite thick as you can see. This takes place in a fantasy world where there are different kingdoms and the particular kingdoms that we focus on in this novel are the Summer Kingdom and the Winter Kingdom. Two kingdoms that are at war for an issue that I'm not going to give away here because that would be a spoiler. The main protagonist, Kamsin, the Princess of Summerly. She is the youngest and most hated daughter of her father. He has four daughters and she's the youngest one and because her birth also coincided with the death of her mother, he absolutely despises her. Our hero is Winter Atrelin, who is the king of the Winter Court. And so as you can see, they are both a part of the Warring Kingdoms. They're clashing, and of course, this is their love story, how they get together amidst all the war going on. There's also um, another backstory involved. There's a mystery involved. And yeah, I just loved it. The fantasy world was rich and beautiful, the story unique, and the main characters were fully fleshed out and so real. I absolutely loved Campson. I was rooting for her. She was strong and independent and passionate and just a beautiful female protagonist. She was fully formed and well-rounded and I just enjoyed reading her. I loved being in her corner. I didn't have any issues with her whatsoever, which is rare for me with female protagonists. The hero of the novel, Winter, I liked him as well, but I liked her so much more and I appreciate that. And I feel like a lot of times in romances, the males are built up so much and you know they, they become our book boyfriends and they're these fantastic characters and the females just aren't as fleshed out and can't quite live up to their male counterparts and this is a book where i can confidently say that is not the case so i definitely recommend this for lovers of romance and fantasy another book i flew through and loved and read during the booktubeathon is trial by fire by josephine angelini this is another world that i was just enraptured by. So captivated, so excited, so wrapped up. The premise was so fascinating with alternate realities and the reality she ended up in, in was so cool. I haven't seen a world like that ever in young adult and it was so cool to see like an alternate America and what would have happened if the Native, Native Americans had never been completely wiped out and what would have happened if they had been allowed to thrive, although thrive might be you know the wrong word in this particular case but I kind of love that I didn't really know anything about this novel going into it um, so I don't want to give too much away I will say the female protagonist is kick-ass and you're going to love Lily Proctor I will say that the world is absolutely fascinating and very very unique I've never seen a storyline like this before it involves witches um, another buzzword the Salem witch trials or witch hunts, um, if you like great twists on magic and spells and things like that, you're going to really like this book. So I would recommend it. I loved it so much that when I finished it, I flew to the library and picked up the second book in the series, Firewalker, which I am now in the middle of. It's kind of put me in a little bit of a reading slump, to be honest with you, because it's getting to be kind of predictable in the like right in the middle of the book. It's getting to that place where I'm like, ugh. And I really want there to be a twist because I hate predictable, predictable books. But um, 
yeah so I will say the first book is really great and it will definitely make you want to rush out and get the second book and I think the third book is coming out soon I'm not sure when I'll put the date down here once I find out and I'll annotate the date but yeah so I would actually recommend this series as well all right so now that I'm on the series train we might as well talk about boom Jennifer L. Armentrout's The Dark Element series sorry he's in my lap and he's driving me nuts you might have to go down boo boo Anyways, so Jennifer L. Armentrout's The Dark, is it what it's called? Yeah, The Dark Element series. I completely devoured this in the month of July. I read White Hot Kiss during the book Two Bathon. Then after that, I quickly picked up Stone Cold Kiss, and I wrapped it up at the end of the month with Every Last Breath. Now, this series, I have very mixed feelings and conflicted thoughts on. I loved the first book. I thought it was unique, imaginative. It's a world where gargoyles exist and... You know, hell is very real, demons are very real, and so are angels. And they're not quite the black and white characters that, you know, typical religious lore would paint them as. So I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the individuality of each race, if you will. And I loved that there were good and bad gargoyles, good and bad demons, good and bad angels. I thought that was kind of cool. I loved the rules in this world. I loved how imaginative it was. I loved how fleshed out the characters were, how much I was rooting for them, and the twists that I didn't see coming. But I would say that by the third book, the romance just became very predictable. You know, it's, there was kind of a love triangle in this book, and by the second book, it was all like, ooh, who's she going to choose? But by the beginning of the third book, the author made it just very definitive who she chose, and it was very early on in the book. So that was a little disappointing, mostly because it was just so predictable in that aspect. There were no twists. And that final book just kind of ruined the series for me. Not just because of that, but just it got so corny and trekly sweet. And sweet enough to give me cavities, y'all. And I love romance. You guys know that if you've been watching my channel. I read a lot of romance. But I love my romance to have some edge to it. And to not be corny and just overly saccharine. And... Yeah, I don't know. The third book just kind of ruined the series for me. Like, it just became really... Mm. It had some really cool moments, some bright moments. Um, I loved how self-sacrifice and um, selflessness and wanting to make the world a better place were really cool themes in the series in general and as a whole. But just that third book just... Ooh. And I feel like that is a common occurrence for me as a reader. I struggle with final books in a series. Like I really enjoy a series and then I get to that final book and it just almost ruins the entire series for me and it just doesn't live up to my expectations. And there are only a handful of series that um, have survived that third book or final book curse for me, but those are also like my favorite series of all time. So, you know, would I recommend these books? I would. You know, they're fun, they're interesting, the world is unique, the writing really isn't the best. People really love Jennifer L. Armentrout, and I've read quite a few of her books now, and I don't think her writing is that great. <laughs> I feel horrible saying that, but I just don't, you know, it's not like, I'm not blown away, but she does know how to capture your interest. Um, she does write really cool, witty banter. Um, between characters there's a lot of sexual tension she does that really well but you know I feel like that's kind of holding her writing and her stories together sometimes you know what I mean when it comes to plotting it's not always as tight as I would like when it comes to storytelling and um, language and um, like her voice it's not you know unique or anything like that but if you're looking for something fun and new and different then yes I would recommend these and hopefully you have better luck with the third book. <laughs> Another series I fell in love with and that I started during the booktubeathon would be the Arcana Chronicles. I don't know if it's Arcana or Arcana. Someone please tell me and write it in the description box. Because I feel like... Great, now I have dog hair all over me. I feel like I'm getting it wrong. <laughs> but I read Poison Princess during the Booktubeathon and completely fell in love with the story. This is another fantasy world that is so unique and different. Um, I would guess I would say this is a paranormal more than a fantasy um, and it could even be described as like the beginning of a dystopian because it's kind of like 
on the way to being a dystopian because it's like the end of the world. That's not a spoiler. At least, I hope not. Nope, not a spoiler. It's on the back of the book. So yeah, as you can see, um, I've already given it away. This takes place at the end of the world and it's the apocalypse basically and a 16 year old girl has to deal with it all and she's seen visions of it happening and then it happens and she kind of meets unique characters along the way. This also has something to do with tarot cards and powers and this is definitely a storyline I have never seen before. Like this is completely 100% unique. Kudos to you, Crusley Cole, for coming up with this because I've never seen anything like this. So many cool characters, so many cool ways this could go. I have no idea what's going to happen and I think that's why I enjoy it so much. I feel like I read so much I can kind of predict plots sometimes. So it's nice to read a book and have no clue what's going to happen. I think that's kind of cool. Um, so I finished it and I quickly picked up Endless Night and flew through that one. And now I have the third book, Dead of Winter, but I haven't started it yet. So I've it's on my TBR for August. August. <laughs> August. So yeah, really enjoyed this. Definitely recommend this series as well. It's great. Now on to the Kindle books I read this month. That stood out to me. <laughs> Book two in the Royal series came out. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, then you know I completely gushed about the first book, Paper Princess by Erin Watt. I completely loved it. I read it in May, I think, and I was just completely just fell in love with the story, fell in love with the main character, I fell in love with just everything, the writing, I, oh, I was in love. So I gushed to you guys about it, recommended it to y'all, and the sequel came out in July. It came out July 25th, and you better believe I was downloading that thing at midnight, and it's called Broken Prince. And oh, the drama, the drama, the drama. It was drama filled. So if you like angsty drama filled reads, then I would definitely recommend the second book to you. Although if you've read the first book, you kind of have to read the second book. Just be, Ted, no, no, stop it. Don't eat that. Oh my goodness. Just because of the way the first book ends, as he goes right back to eating that. Ted! I'm sorry. Anyways, um, the way that Paper Princess ends, you just have to go rush to pick up Broken Prince, like you have to. So it was good. Um, I feel like I gave it five stars, simply because I'm just in love and I'm completely invested in the story now. And, you know, even though it didn't completely live up to the first book to me in terms of plot and just impact, I have high hopes for the third book. Hmm, we shall see. I don't know when it'll be out, but we shall see. Another book that I gave five stars that I completely just fell in love with is Unto Harry by L.A. Casey. Now, L.A. Casey has some other books out that I love. She has a series out that I really would recommend to you guys. It's good. Go definitely check her out if you like to read on an e-reader. But um, Unto Harry was such a beautiful story. This is a story that is not just a new adult romance. It has such strong elements of family and redemption, forgiveness, heartache, getting over loss, death, pain, starting over in life, figuring out who you are, um, you know, going after your dreams and never giving up on the greatest love of your life. And if that string of adjectives and descriptions doesn't pique your interest, you crazy. But I will link all of these books I'm talking about. I would link their Goodreads and Amazon pages in the description. So if you're interested in any of them, definitely go check it out. But in a, in a nutshell, Until Harry is a book about a girl who had her heart completely shattered. Um, she's originally from overseas. And when her heart is shattered, she runs away to America, to New York City specifically. But a death of someone so close to her that completely devastates her is what ends up bringing her back home. And she has to kind of reconcile with her family and just kind of heal from the hurt that was dealt to her all those years ago. She has to face the person that dealt that hurt and she kind of has to find out that he's also been hurt and damaged while she's been away. And it's been years and years since she left and they changed in very very definitive ways, but it's beautiful to see how they come together, how they rediscover their lost friendship and their lost love for one another. It's beautiful to see this family come together, the family dynamics and how they heal from her running away and how she comes back and begins to find herself and her place again within her family. It's just such a beautiful story and I just love that L.A. Casey wrote it because her other series is so raunchy and edgy and like in your face. 
and it's cool to see this like softer more emotional side of her I really enjoyed it so I would recommend it to lovers of new adult and also just more emotional new adult reads that are deeper than just a romance that have elements of family and sacrifice and all those things that I described at the beginning I ain't gonna say it again y'all if you like that stuff and those are your buzzwords then you're gonna love this book Another book that completely just blew me out of the water is Grin and Beard It. Yes, Beard as in Beard by Penny Reed. Now I kind of cheated because this book is actually book two in a series. It's called the Winston Brothers series and I did not read book one because I read the premise and the premise for book two just kind of piqued my interest and I'm very very like used to reading books out of series on my Kindle. I do it all the time with new adult books and I find that it usually doesn't ruin my enjoyment of the series to read them out of order. So, you know, do what you will to each their own, right? And so Grin and Bearded was just such a beautiful story. It was funny. It was different. I liked the main character and the fact that she was plus size. I hate that word. She's a normal freaking woman and she is a Hollywood star and she's made it even though she's bigger and she's Latina, which I love. You don't see a lot of Latina characters and she is like a Hollywood success story because she made it because she's bigger and she's Latina and think of like Amy Schumer if Amy Schumer was Latina. I feel like that's what they kind of pattern this character off of or Penny Reed pattern this character off of. So if you love Amy Schumer, then yeah, she's funny, she's great, and she falls in love, of course, with the male protagonist, and he is just lovely. I just really love this book. It's like a romantic comedy in a nutshell, basically. So if you enjoy romantic comedies in movie form or book form, you will love this book. It is so unique, so different. Ted! Okay, you're, you're getting out, Ted. I can't with you. You have to go. Say goodbye to the people. Anyway, so if you like romantic comedies, if you like funny books, if you like reading a love story that's also funny and has light moments and also more deeper emotional moments, I would recommend this book to you. <laughs> Another book by Penny Reed that I also read because once I read Grin and Bearded I was really just like captivated by her as a writer and I wanted to see what else she had. So I looked and I saw she had another series called The Knitting Series. Excuse me, Knitting in the City. <laughs> and I went ahead and downloaded book one. Neanderthal Seeks Human. And this book was so rich. Oh my goodness. It was nothing like I was expecting. I feel like with the female protagonist in this book, you're either going to love her or you're going to hate her. I almost feel like she had Asperger's, but it wasn't stated. Um, she had extreme social anxiety. Um, she had quirks where she just knew all these facts. And when she got really nervous or she was in a social situation where she felt uncomfortable, she would just start rattling off all of these facts. And she was super smart, like genius level intelligent. And her love story with the male protagonist is so unique and interesting. And it was so great to watch her find a man who just accepted her and loved her for who she, for who she is, which is someone that is not the norm in society, someone that would probably be mocked and ostracized. And she has such a great group of female friends. And I really enjoyed that. All of the female friends, the side characters, which I'm sure they have their own books in the series. And they all kind of got together and like knit and talk and just supported each other and loved each other and accepted each other with all of their different quirks and different personalities and different ethnicities. So cool. But I definitely highly recommend Neanderthal Seeks Human if you like books that are a little bit more different and off the beaten path and a more contemporary new adult romantic, new adult romantic genre then you're gonna really love this because it's nothing like I've ever read the female protagonist is so unique and so herself and I really loved it next I want to talk about a series that really just captured me this series is by K.S. Adkins and I actually read this one in order this time book one is Motown Throwdown and what I absolutely adored about this book is the interracial couple in it which you don't see a lot of the male protagonist was a black man who had just been let out of prison. It sounds, it's starting to sound cliche-ish and like slightly racist-ish, but it's not like that at all. He 
read the book. I don't want to give anything away because honestly, when I went into the book, I didn't know anything about it and it was amazing what I discovered. But he was formerly a football star that was on his way to star in the NFL and make millions of dollars and become a huge star when one mistake and messing with the wrong woman and being at the wrong place at the wrong time unfortunately ended him, ended his dreams and landed him behind bars. It's so sad, this theme of like lost dreams and just in, in light of what's happening in the world right now, just how it's coming to light the systematic racism that still exists and people are finally starting to admit to themselves, well not people because if you look like me you've already known, but just the rest of the world is starting to admit it to themselves like wow this shit is still true and just the wrongful inca incarceration of black men and also just how easy it is to throw harder sen sentences and longer sentences at black men because our system is so corrupt and our justice system is so skewed and not in our favor and it was so cool how this book highlighted that in subtle ways without you know going into too much detail or being too preachy being too preachy and the female protagonist protagonist is a white female so that was really interesting to see those dynamics play out in light of just like in the back of my mind is like what is happening in today's world and just remembering that love sees no color and we are all one race i'm getting so deep and philosophical right now but it was just cool to read a book like this in July with in light of everything that was happening, you know, with Alton Sterling and Philando Castile and oh, yeah, it was so cool to read this book. I think it actually helped me. It started me on the journey of reading the rest of the series. Book two is Motown Showdown and it's actually my favorite in the series because the female protagonist is probably one of my favorite female protagonists I've ever read. Yeah, she is fucking amazing. She is an assassin, okay? An assassin. If you like reading about assassins, you need to read this book because she's fucking cool as fuck. Like, she is amazing. Like, I'm speechless right now. I don't even know how to describe her. Just please read the series. And, you know, K.S. Adkins could definitely, like, benefit from a kick-ass editor and I just wish that more independent authors had more resources, had more resources to these things sometimes. But, you know, her writing definitely gets better as the series goes on. And it's a character driven series. And the way she writes, she's character driven, not necessarily plot driven. So you just get completely cu caught up and wrapped up in these characters and you just fall in love with them. And it just makes you love the entire series. The third book is Motown Takedown. And I love that as well. And all these books take place in the city of Detroit because the author, I'm guessing, is from Detroit and she just really loves it. So that's kind of cool too. And it's like the seedier, darker, like underbelly of Detroit. And there's definitely like gray, morally gray characters. So I love that about this series. I cannot talk about it enough. I'm so glad I found these books and I just recommend them to all of you. Definitely go check them out. Whew. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you for sticking it out with me. I know it's a long one, but 29 books, you guys. 29 books read in July. And I just wanted to highlight the ones that really, 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 really have now a place in my heart forever. And, you know, next month, I, you know, hopefully won't be as long unless I read 29 books or more. But I think I might be a little bit burnt out after July, you guys. It's August and I've only completed two books. I am currently 300 pages in to the final book in the Remnant Chronicles. Yeah, Remnant Chronicles. Is that what we're calling ourselves? Yep, Remnant Chronicles, which begins with The Kiss of Deception. Book two is The Heart of Betrayal. And the final book is, what is it called? And the final book is The Beauty of Darkness. So The Beauty of Darkness right now, 277 277 pages in and yeah my reading is definitely going a lot slower this month so we'll see and I promise I'll do another reading wrap up next month and that's it that's it for this video thank you all so much for watching and please subscribe if you want more of these types of videos and you want to see more of my little face okay I love you guys so much and I will catch you in my next video Bye.
Whew, I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it. 29 books in July. 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 How'd I do it? <laughs>